The road she traveled. And our women who made a difference. Aquila Kids gift to our community. Welcome to the personal interview with Barb Schultz, conducted on April 26, 2006, by Amy, Part 1. Will you say and spell your name? Barb Schultz, B-A-R-B-S-C-H-U-L-T-C. What is your story about being in the committees? The story would be primarily about my leadership role in the Lacrosse Education Association. What did you have to do when you were in charge of the association? Well, I was the president of the association for about nine years, actually on two different occasions, a set of three years and a set of six years later. And I also, before that, was very actively involved in what was called teacher rights and political action, negotiations, and many different committees of the association. And then as a result of being involved as president, I also was on various boards and committees in the community, different agencies, such as the United Way. What made you want to be on the committees? Well, I think part of it was a matter of seeing that I didn't always like what was happening, and I didn't feel that I could complain about it without actually putting in time and being part of it. So that's how I became involved in the first place. As far as being on committees in the community, it's a way of giving back to the community. It's also a way of serving as a representative of teachers. What was your best memory of working in the committees? My best memory. Wow, that's a hard one. <laughs> I guess my best memory is more a general thing, and that's a matter of having been able to get along well with both sides, if you want to look at it as sides, uh, the teachers for the most part, and the administration or the school board on the other side. I didn't feel that there was animosity there, that we were enemies at any time. And I think that's my best memory of the entire experience, knowing that I could disagree without being disagreeable or being an enemy. Was there anyone that motivated you to help you on being in charge, and how did they? Well, there are probably a lot of people that motivated me to become actively involved. Um, I think about when I was student teaching, I student taught at Lincoln and at what was then campus school at the university. And the guidance counselor at Lincoln was very influential in obviously in my eventually becoming a counselor, but also just her style of dealing with people. With students, she, she was a disciplinarian. She, if somebody was in trouble, that's who would take care of it. And in the next day or even the same day, she would be able to uh, befriend that student and counsel that student without any problem. And I mean, that's a gift if you can discipline someone and then turn around, turn around and be like a friend to that person. I, that's a skill that I probably don't have. I'm not into the discipline end of things, but she motivated me. Um, Tom Bina was one of our regional directors of the teachers union and again was a motivating force to my involvement. Was there like a time that you thought that you didn't want to be helping people because you thought it was just too much or did you have always... any doubt? Well my only doubt would have been that it took a great deal of time and Teaching is a full-time job. Being a counselor is a full-time job. Uh, at that time, my family situation was such that the rest of the family kind of pitched in and did some of the things that I wasn't able to do at home. So that allowed me 
to be involved because there were many nights that I had meetings. How did your family feel about it? Okay. I would say pretty supportive. Was it there, were you a teacher before you started the communities or were you a teacher, like, did you go around the communities and then you became a teacher? No, I was a teacher, I was a Spanish teacher actually, and I also taught some English for about, um, about five years maybe before I became really involved in, in the committees and things. What do you think um, for the paychecks and the paying area of teachers, what is your opinion on that? Well, my opinion is that we've come a long ways from when I started teaching. The year that I started teaching was the first year that women were paid the same as men. Prior to that, men were given more money because they were considered like head of household. So that was the first year. And yet at that time, my pay, I started out at $5,450 for the entire year. So, you know, back then maybe that was enough money, but certainly not enough for the experience and the education involved in becoming a teacher. So we worked hard to get that pay up. Do you have any kids? No, I don't have any kids. Okay. I have a dog, I but say. no kids. Uh, how, what was lacrosse like? And what was the law like when you were trying to change things? Lacrosse at that time was very conservative. We at one time had a mayor that would win on telling people that he would keep school taxes down. He was very negative toward education, although his daughter was a teacher, so mm -hmm. it didn't make a lot of sense. And the community at that time kept electing him mm -hmm. on that platform. Um, at the same time, the Teachers Association complained to our National Association and people came in from the National Association and actually sanctioned the School District of La Crosse and that means they gave them a real black mark saying that things were not the way they should be, that the education system at that time was really poor and that was that was when things started turning around. All of that took place right around 1971, long before you were born. And there was a teacher's strike, a one-day teacher's strike at that time as well, although at that time it was illegal, and it would be again now. For, for a while, we had what was called binding arbitration, and worked hard to get that into law, where if the school board and the teachers could not come to some agreement on our contract that we could have an arbitrator make the decision of who was right, who was wrong, or who would win. Okay. Now since that time we no longer have that law. We have another law that's not so good. But over the years things have kind of gone in cycles where it's been really poor and then it's come around and been fairly good. And now we're kind of in a tight squeeze again with what was called the QEO, which is a qualified economic offer. And that says that we cannot raise our salaries more than a certain small percentage each year. So the law changes, and it's not always for the best. How do you feel about that? Well, I feel we need to really work hard to prevent things like that from happening. Just recently there was what was called Tabor at one time, and then it changed to another name called uh, TP, I believe, taxpayers. It was to prevent taxes from going up, and it would have been very, very bad, not only for education, but also for uh, health care and uh, police, fire, and so on, because it would have limited the state of Wisconsin on raising any taxes without everybody voting on it. I mean, it gets more complicated than that, but it would have been very, very bad for education, and fortunately that did not pass the assembly. So we're okay for a while, but it'll probably come back up again. So I feel we need to work hard to prevent things like that from happening. When, the, when you said the mayor was going, like, 
was talking negative about education, what do you think the community that wanted more money to go somewhere else than education? And how do you I feel about that? I think they just did, they just didn't want their taxes to go up. And I mean, who does? I mean, it's it gets expensive to pay taxes, and some people certainly are on fixed incomes and can't afford a lot more. I don't know that people in La Crosse were against education, but it was more they just didn't want to pay more in taxes. Now our taxes as far as schools have gone down considerably, but other areas of taxes have gone up. People don't always realize that. Was there like a in the, was there a time in the when you were in the community, like that you want that you felt like you want to be in more so you can help more in the community? Uh, there was a time when I became involved in some of the state committees, where I would go to Madison for meetings and work not only on this local level but more on statewide problems. And for a while that was okay, but again, that took more time. It took weekends and such. So that. What do you think was your worst memory um, of being in the society and the committees? And I think my, my worst memory came probably right at the beginning when I was involved, and that was the one day strike. It was very difficult as a teacher to strike. In other words, to walk a picket line around the building when students were coming to school. Yeah, that's very difficult. And knowing that it was against the law. And what did the police do about it? They filed what is called an injunction and that prevented us from striking. It took they they took it to court and there was a settlement from that, but I think without that action, we probably would not have gotten very far as far as our contract. I mean, that was when things started turning around, not only for the contract, but also for the improvement of education in La Crosse, because it drew people's attention, certainly. I'm sure if you, you think about coming to school and seeing all your teachers walking around the building with picket signs and the police being there, that would be real confusing. And what it was. Did the did the parents complain at all or what did the kids think about it? Well, I think the kids were really confused. Should they go into school or should they go home? So yeah, I'm sure there were complaints. And did were any kids like emotional, like crying or? I don't remember and that's a long time ago. I don't remember that anyone was crying, but it was more like, well, what should we do? Should we go in? Should we yeah. stay out? Because it was a matter of who would be in charge once they got into the building, subs or whatnot. Um, what do you think was the best committee that you were in? <laughs> the best committee. Well, the one that I probably enjoyed the most was the teacher rights, where we tried to solve problems if teachers were having concerns about things in their, in their building. Um, I, I didn't care for negotiations, which is sitting and trying to figure out a contract. I really didn't enjoy that that much. I also enjoyed the political action stuff with legislators and so on, and getting people elected to school board, assembly, whatever. Well, if you didn't like what some of those committees, why did you stay in them? Because as the president, I was on all of the committees, so I, I felt that I needed to be part of it, but uh, negotiations is kind of like a game where both sides come in and both sides ask for the world, basically, a lot more than they expect to end up with. And I'm not that kind of person. I like to come in and say, okay, this is the bottom line, let's settle on it. And it doesn't work that way, so I, I just didn't enjoy that. Um, what was, what friend did you make that is still with you now that was, um, that you 
were the best with? Well, I made some really good friends with people that I worked with on the committees and in some cases still see those people like every month. In one case, a uh, couple teachers that were active on the committees, we meet once a month, go out for dinner and such, and I mean, that's been a long time that we, we work together. So, and then you, you know, you get to know a lot of people because you have large meetings as well as a small committee meeting, so you, you really get to know a lot of people and they're with you for a long time. Over the years, why did you um, quit the committees? Well, I quit the committees for one thing. I wasn't elected one year. There was an election and I lost by one vote. It's a long story. But anyway, I still served on some committees, but because of my situation in my family, I'm not able to put in the time any longer, and that's pretty much why I haven't been as active on committees. So, could you tell us the story about losing by one vote? Well, <laughs> if I could remember the story, that's probably... Uh, there was a campaign, kind of a stealth campaign, that went on that I wasn't aware of by the other candidate, and I think some misinformation was given and as a result some people voted for the other person thinking that I really didn't want to run that I just had my name on the ballot and there was that was part of it so that's what happened how did you feel about that like at the time I was I was upset about the way it was handled uh, probably it was for the best in a sense because, as I say, I put in a lot of time and I then had some time more for myself. So that, in that sense, it was positive. What was that committee, committee for? What would it have changed? Like, if you won, what would you have changed? Well, I would have, had, I would have been the president again for like a tenth year. So, yeah. How long when you're president, how long does it last? It's a one year presidency and then you run again. And um, why did you become a counselor? Why did I become a counselor? I guess I saw a lot of issues that students had that I didn't feel at the time were really being addressed. And I told you earlier about the counselor over at Lincoln being a motivating factor. and that and the fact that after a certain number of years of teaching first year Spanish here at Longfellow and earlier at Lincoln, I just believed I didn't want to do that for the rest of my career. And I decided that counseling was the way that I wanted to go. So I went to Winona State evenings and summers and got my master's degree in counseling. Can you tell us the story of uh, becoming a counselor? In, in what sense? Like how, what did you do to become a counselor? You what to process school? did you have to go through? Well, you have to have a master's degree, which means I had to have, I think it was at that time, 30 credits of college graduate work in addition to everything else that I already had, in addition to my college degree, which was in Spanish and English. And in addition to that, I had to have a certain amount of work experience outside of education. When I was in college, I worked at Sears as a, an office cashier and a switchboard operator, so I had that. I also had to have had at least three years of teaching experience. Those were the rules back then. So it was a matter of taking psychology classes, uh, working with students in a counseling setting in order to get my degree. And as I say, I spend a lot of evenings going up to Winona and a lot of summers going up there in order to get those credits. Why didn't you become like a, a like a normal teacher with like a big classroom of kids and not a language teacher? Well, I had I had a lot of kids. Actually, my first year I had 39 students in one of my Spanish classes. Yeah. But I also have a degree in English. And I did have English classes, so in that sense, it would have been, you know, the, the regular pod, core classroom. 
I didn't enjoy teaching English that much at what was then junior high. I, I would have preferred if I were going to teach English to teach either high school or college English literature. Was it hard for you being a guidance counselor? No. I, I've really enjoyed being a counselor because every day is a little bit different than the day before. And I like the variety. I like working with small groups of students, individual students. And I did fine in the classroom too, so I worked okay with large groups, but I, I guess I prefer the counseling setting. When you were the president of the committee, did it did that, and then you want to be a guidance counselor, did you know you were going to stay with the committee? Just keep helping? Or? Well, I did stay with, with uh, the committees for a long time, even when I was a counselor because I became a counselor in 1980, and I was involved with LEA until about 95. What would you say if, when you were younger, if someone said that your future was going into the educational setting, what would you say? Would I, you knew, not that, I knew that since I was a little kid. Oh. Since I was a, about two, three years old, I was playing teacher. I remember doing it. So I guess I always knew that's what I wanted to do. I had originally wanted to be a math teacher. And to this day, I love math. And I started out with a math major in college. But in my calculus class, which was my second college class, there were 26 students, 25 guys and me. So at that point, I decided maybe that wasn't for girls to do. And everybody was very nice. It wasn't that they were discriminating or anything like that, but I just, I wasn't comfortable. It was like walking into the boys' locker room. <laughs> but um, I took some math classes after that, but then I changed my major to Spanish, and I have a minor in English and a master's degree in English, so. Do you regret not being a math teacher? Sometimes, because as I say, I enjoy it. And I still do some math type things, but what? I, I like too many things and that was the problem. What do you think the best thing you've done over being in the committees and becoming guidance counselor and teacher, what do you think the best thing? The best of all, all of those? Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't know. I guess in, in each of them, I would have hoped that I could influence someone. And I, I don't know which, how you can say, well, this was the best. The most serious things would probably be in counseling, where sometimes you're dealing with people that are very depressed and are threatening harm to themselves. And I guess that, to me, would be the most important. Um, how, wh how long were you in Spanish? 13 years. And why did you want to change at that point? What made you think about going into counseling? I guess I felt I needed the change because it was too much the same year mm -hmm. after year and I wanted a little more variety. I had considered at one point going to the high school and teaching at that level. And why wouldn't you want to do that? At, at that time it didn't work out and I decided that was probably for the best because I guess I've always felt that junior high at that time or middle school students would be the age level that I would prefer over high school. Because high school students a lot of times are not as spontaneous maybe, and I know they have problems of their own, but they're not as open as middle school kids are. Would you consider yourself a role model for I would hope that I could consider myself that. How was it like being in charge of some big communities that changed a lot? How was it like being in charge? Like, what did you feel like? Well, certainly I felt frustration at times that more people did not get involved when we would be successful and whatever. Certainly that felt good. But again, I guess the frustration with people that just don't seem to care is the hardest thing.
Um, why didn't you think about going into elementary school? Are they just too young or? Yeah, I, I never, never really wanted to do anything in the elementary school setting, although I am certified to, to be a counselor for kindergarten through 12th grade. So that, that is there, but I just, working with little kids, I just never did. I don't have any little kids in my family, any nieces or nephews, so that's probably why. I much prefer kids your age. Through um, going through this committee process, did you have to research a lot and read a lot of books and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah you do, you have to go to a lot of workshops and seminars and learn about a lot of the things. Who do you think changed your life the most in this whole experience? Who changed my life? Hmm. Well, that's a hard one because there were so many people that were influential in, in a lot of it. Um, I guess I, I can't say who, who would have been the most influential or in making any changes. Was there anything that you were like, that you remember this day that you changed, that you were happy about like changing in this community? Changing about myself or about... Just like any law in the community or healthy teachers? I think probably one of the most successful things would have been when we would have had people that we backed for school board that were successful in their campaign. And I felt good about that. And um, that's any number of times that there were candidates that we supported. Did you think that a paying amount today um, could be raised or is not enough? Well, as I explained earlier, the QEO, the Qualified Economic Offer, prohibits that from happening. And I guess I would like to see the QEO gone because other professions are not treated that way. They're allowed to you know, negotiate a contract, a salary, without the state coming in and saying, no, you can't have more than this. And so why I'd is like to see the that QEO there? Like, why is it needed? Well, see, I don't feel it's needed, but the state of Wisconsin, the legislature, passed it, in, again, in order to keep taxes down. Do you think the paying amount is different in each state? Yes, and it is. Do you think we're like the lowest or no, one of? No, we're not the lowest, but we're getting lower in that ranking all of the time. Uh, the southern states are oftentimes the lowest paid states. What is the story that you had when being in the com com being the president of the committee? Is like, is there a story that you remember of changing anything? Or? A memory. Wow. There were so many, so many different occasions, I guess. One memory, I received an award from our regional association. It's called Crew Cooley Region United Educators. And it had been a big surprise. I, I hadn't had a clue, so that was really really a nice surprise that I received an award for, I think it was my public relations committee that I had worked with. So that was kind of a nice memory. This podcast brought to you from across Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.